Yo, what's going on guys? It's Russ. In this video, I want to go over my brand new Amara build that I was teasing the other day, and that is the Crossblade Amara build. And as you probably already know, this is going to be involved all around the brand new gun, the Blade Fury. Many people have been making builds for this weapon, but honestly, there are a lot of different unique ways you can actually use this gun on every character. So I want to give you guys my take on how I've been running it on my Amara, because I actually think it's one of the best setups in the game for her right now. And it is just crazy, crazy strong. Also, as a quick little note, if you don't know much about the Blade Fury, I will link one of my videos in the description so you guys can go watch that and understand a little bit more about the gun. But just a quick little TLDR, it can do splash melee and gun damage, which is really, really good, especially on a character like Amara, because you can do a lot of interesting and unique things with it. And that's what I hope to show you in this video. So if you guys do enjoy this build and want to try it out for yourself, as always, these builds are located in my Discord channel. If you would like to download them, the link to the Discord will be in the description. If you download the build and enjoy the video, find it helpful in anyway consider subscribing and dropping like it really helps me out and our community grow by getting these videos out there for everyone to see i truly appreciate it but jumping right into the build obviously the first thing we're going to talk about is the blade furies if you don't know this actually can't come with a master variant which is really really good basically if you don't know what a master is you get a times four version of the gun and it's going to shoot out multiple projectiles instead of one essentially just more damage so this one right here i have with the anoint killing enemy grants 13 percent weapon damage aiming low speed for 25 seconds this effect stacks this is going to be really good because you're not going to have alacrity with this build this is really really going to help with your reload speed and you're going to be able to just constantly reload over and over again and get that huge damage buff it's kind of if you play destiny it's kind of like rampage on steroids it's a really 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 good anoint now in the next uh blade fury i have again as another master variant but this is just after using face slam you get 300 percent increased damage for a short time this is going to be really good for bossing this is 100 your bossy one and once again like i said earlier this is going to do splash melee and gun damage now getting down to the other parts of the gear i just have an execute this can just apply debuff if you unload the magazine completely empty and throw it on an enemy it puts a little debuff on them and then the mp5 is just for movement speed you really never even have to use these two obviously if you want to move a little faster for mp5 you can but the main weapons are obviously both of these blade furies now getting to the gear of the build i'm gonna be running a revolter this is pretty much standard for any build nowadays uh on actual start you activate any effects to trigger on showbreaker field you're still going to get this insane damage bonus this buffs literally every single build part of your damage and it just makes the play here even more insane. Now, grenade, I'm running fish slap. Since we're going to be taking a bunch of melee damage already, you might as well play into that with your grenade. So you're going to make your grenade also do melee damage. This is also really good for ball scene if the blade fury happens to struggle which it never does but if it ever gets to a part where it happens to struggle you do have a fish slap and i have three elements with uh incendiary shock and corrosive all with their uh you know respective axe skill and anoints on them so you can get as much damage as possible now for artifacts i have a knife drain static charge with axle corner rate area effect damage and melee damage these artifacts are very very good also have three stone white elephants uh again in corrosive fire and shock so this is going to give you more damage again if you're going up against a boss you can swap to something like this to make sure you get the most damage and then the sticky bombs also do a little bit more damage but at least have more melee damage more damage to whatever the element is and more air effect damage which is splash damage and obviously like i said the blade fury does splash damage so overall these artifacts are gonna help you out in every way i personally just like to run the knife drain static charge all the time because you just stay up forever um you're actually not gonna have to stay with the setup that i have so this is really really good for that and the static charge obviously is gonna chain lightning everywhere which is gonna make it even easier to add clear with some of your other skills that you're gonna be taking now the main difference i'm running with my build is that i'm actually running a break class mod with five and jab cross now i will get into this a little bit more once i get into the skill tree but if you don't know what the breaker does this is going to give you damage reduction close shot to an enemy it's a nice little bonus but you know i'm mainly just using it for plus five and jab cross now this is also even more splash damage jacob's critical hit damage and melee damage all these are really good i know a lot of people really spec into the melee portion of just the gun but i want it to be a little different and actually focus on both so you're getting melee damage and normal damage of the gun and with those two combined you're going to be able to just absolutely destroy everything but jumping over to the skill tree we're actually doing a little different we're not putting any points in mystical assault which i know is pretty much a sin for most of our players because mystical assault is so so good but we're actually going to be focused on green tree and purple tree and a little bit in orange tree but starting off and purple tree purple tree works very very well with this so we're going to get five and heavy rain which is going to give you more projectile speed and splash damage both are really really good again the splash damage is going to buff the gun's damage itself and the projectile speed obviously makes it easier for your bullets to hit or knives now we have no mistakes in nature so five points in this you're going to get 65 percent melee damage whenever you apply status effect to an enemy you're always going to be applying status effects especially as a mara so you're just getting 65 percent more damage which is really really good 
trusting yourself. So every short breaks, you get 20% more reload speed, 40% charge speed, and 80% weapon slot speed. The main thing is the reload speed to, to kind of help out with the reload speed of the Blade Fury. But this is just a really good overall skill since the Revolter is based all around your short breaking. This is just going to give you more benefits when you short breaks alongside the fiery and damage bonus. Now, I'm actually taking one at Combo Breaker, so whenever you get a melee kill, which we will all the time with the Blade Fury, obviously, you have a 20% chance to instantly reset your action skill. And while we're on the topic of action skill, we're going to be running Tiles to Battle with Expedite, because if you don't know, Expedite actually recently got fixed, so this will work. So every enemy that gets linked with Tiles to Bond is actually going to buff that action skill a cooldown rate by 30%, which is really, really good. And you're going to be able to just instant clear enemies forever. And this is what makes it really, really easy to not run something like Avatar because Expedite is fixed. And if you have Combo Breaker, you know, having a 20% chance to just instantly refill your Axe Skill, you don't really have to run Avatar as much with this build. Now, Max Skill Element, you are going to have access to all of them. And that is going to play into the fact that if you're going to hit a certain boss, you could swap to Incinerary, then you can swap to your, your Firestone White Elephant, and then your fire fish slap to get as much damage as possible and then again if you're going to get corrosive enemy just do all that with the corrosive stuff but back into the skills we have five points of vermal thin so whenever we use our action skill enemy is going to target us and we get a stacking damage bonus we get five percent damage per stack and you can get up to 15 stacks this is going to give you a huge huge damage bonus this just buffs all your damage and if you remember the blade fury does every bit of damage pretty much in the game so you're buffing your damage like crazy with this then I have one point left over because I want to get to the bottom. So I put it in Joy for Freedom. So I'm going to use our action skill and get 14% more melee damage, which is, you know, pretty good for just one skill point. And you're always going to be using your action skill. So that's just a little bit more damage. But then you have three points in body and mind. So whenever you get a kill, the kill skill activates and your melee attack is going to deal bonus splash damage for a short time. So since the Blade Fury is technically obviously doing melee damage, your assault rifle now is basically causing explosions everywhere. It's insane on top of it already getting splash damage bonuses. So that makes it incentivize you buffing your splash damage up even more. So body and mind gets more splash damage. Then on top of that, obviously with your static charge, you're chaining lightning everywhere. So make sure you're sliding to proc that. And you're going to have your assault rifle just chaining lightning, causing explosions literally everywhere. And you're going to be able to act clear like crazy on top of Todd's the bond, obviously helping out with that as well. Then we have one point in clear the bond. So this is again another kill skill. You kill an enemy, a more ignores all elemental uh, damage resistance. This is an insanely good skill. You know, if someone is uh, resistant to corrosive and you shoot corrosive damage, you can just do max corrosive damage, which is really good. And if you're using shock on flesh, you do max damage. Really, really, really good. But now going into the green tree, we have three points of personal space. Now, most of the time, if you've played a face puncher build, uh, you couldn't take personal space because it doesn't actually work with the face puncher. But the thing about the blade theory is that personal space does work with the gun portion of it. So you are getting benefits in personal space, which is really, really nice. And again, with this build, I was kind of playing it both ways to focus on gun and melee damage and not just strictly focus on melee damage. Now, I have two points of clarity. This really isn't doing anything but a little bit of health generation just to get down towards the bottom. But five points to help enhance when we pop our action skill, we're getting 40% damage reduction which is really good because again if you remember we're always going to be popping our axe skill over and over again getting a damage reduction and our class mod is also giving us damage reduction so very very tanky with this build and the knife train obviously will also heal us then five points in arms deals so we get 20 percent more splash damage 40 percent splash damage reduction this will help out with some tankiness as well plus add a little bit more damage to your blade fury now three points of mindfulness so whenever uh you take damage you're going to get some movement speed and ensure regeneration delay this can stack up to 25 times and it's really really easy obviously if you're playing solo to take damage because you're the only thing getting shot at but if you're not you even have skills like burn both in so when you activate your action skill you're gonna be forced to get shot at and that will help buff burn both ends and mouthfulness which is really really nice now 1.5 is set to just get 100 percent more melee damage you do get the increased melee range which is like an okay benefit but you're never really going to be punching with this build i guess you can if you want to but you know 100 melee damage is really really good 1.1 nature to get some more max health and a little bit of elemental damage reduction whatever element is our actual element which is nice but again this is just kind of to get towards the bottom but you know it is a little bit of protection uh now jab cross this is what i want to talk about a lot this says whenever more does melee damage to an enemy she gains increased active skill damage and gun damage for a few seconds but if you put five points in it plus the additional five from the breaker class mod you're getting 30% gun damage and 150% axe skill damage. Obviously, with this build, you already have a ton of melee damage. And if you're really, really trying to focus on buffing the gun damage of the gun, this is going to be really good because the gun is, again, doing splash melee and gun damage. So since you're technically doing melee damage when you shoot your ranged weapon, 
that is also going to be proc and jab cross so you don't have to be super up close to punch enemies all the time nor do you have to stop to a face puncher to get it your gun itself is procking jab cross for you which is in return giving me a 30 percent damage bonus and your axle damage is going to be insanely increased and since that's increased your ties that bind is going to be doing a lot of damage i know obviously most people run phase zerker with plus five and do harm and all the way down to avatar so you just get a ton of axle damage but you don't have to run that with this build because jab cross is doing that for you on top of the gun already doing an insane amount of damage plus it's the gun damage is also getting buffed with this and you're literally constantly going to have this up at all times even if you don't want to run ties that bind and you want to run an actual action skill you will constantly have this 150 percent increased damage which is really really crazy and obviously with x for that as well it's going to be able to cool down a lot faster i really really like the interaction between jab cross and blade fear and that's why i really wanted to base this whole build around i really really think it's good it's really really fun i know it's a little different than what a lot of other people are making and i really hope you guys give this a shot you will like it i promise you you will it's really good it's really hard to not make the blade very good but I wanted to just you know, change it up a little bit and show you guys a different way that you can play it. I really, really, really do enjoy this though. But the last skill point is uh, in Blitz and Green Tree. Again, you can dash towards enemies, but the main thing is you just get the 100% melee damage, which is really, really nice. Now, getting to the last skill tree, we have three instead of hands to get down to the bottom, but this is pretty good to get handling and accuracy. But ma mainly we have five points of diffusion, so we convert whatever our gun damage is 40% of that is going to be whatever action skill element is. So obviously these blade fairies are not elemental. So now you're making them elemental and you can, you know, put on whatever element you need for whatever situation you get into. And if you remember, obviously with no mistakes in nature, whenever you apply status effect, you gain increased melee damage. So with infusion, you're always applying status effects and you're gaining that increased melee damage. Now Tempest, just to get some more elemental damage, this is just overall really good. You're going to get 30% more elemental damage, 20% more shock damage. Very, very solid skills. So literally just buffing everything in the build. Uh, one point illuminated fist. So we can convert our actual element to whatever our melee damage is. That doesn't matter like too much. But the main thing is you're getting the 75% uh, melee damage, which is really, really nice. Then one point in dread. So we get more gun damage whenever we phase grasp an enemy. And if we kill an enemy as phase grasp, we actually get our guns fully reloaded. So again, the gun damage is nice for the build because we are focusing on gun damage as well. Not only melee damage. And then finally, indiscriminate three points in it you pretty much take this in every amara build so all your bullets can ricochet just to make act clear insanely easy for her it is ridiculous how strong this build is you're going to be shooting knives out causing explosions causing chain lightning everywhere they're going to be ricocheting doing everything else again you're buffing your damage in every aspect between melee damage splash damage elemental damage you have face wrath literally available to use pretty much 24 7 when with your anoints on the first blade fury you're going to be also be stacking damage right here with this and reload speed and it's just ridiculous and the whole time jab cross is active you're constantly getting actual damage and you're constantly getting the gun damage and i would definitely say that this is 100 one of omar's best builds in the game right now it's going to let you cover pretty much everything that you need to cover in the game with ease and you don't have to worry about survivability damage output or literally anything you can think of tips i can give you for the build is just remember that you do have your whole arsenal you don't have to completely focus on the blade fury if you want to run something like a face punch you can't you can include that in the build and remember you also have the fish slap if you come across a super tanky enemy just chunk fish slaps on him he's gonna die because uh, the fish slap is just insanely good then things like the execute as well if you need to apply a debuff to an enemy and that is pretty much it for this whole build uh, i hope uh, i explained this well enough so you understand how everything is synergizing with each other the blade fury is probably one of the most interesting weapons they've included in borderlands 3 now because obviously you're doing pretty much every form of damage which can really 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 make for some interesting builds not only on amara but there's even some crazy stuff you can do with mobiles with generating her shields which i might make a build on so if you guys would like to see that again be sure to stick around but yeah that is it for the samara build the save file will be in my discord like i said in the beginning I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the build. If you do try it out or if you try to get everything for yourself, good luck. But thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.